but but right now i appreciate it man i'm i love having you on uh uh, obviously, you're right here in our backyard, and you know you were like a father figure to a, a lot of us as our, our college coach. Um, now you uh, kind of moved on to bigger and better things as owner of the Scorpions. Um, so, kind of, I know, I know the one biggest, the first thing I wanted to ask you, and, and while having you on, and you and I have had countless conversations about it, but you know, I, I'd love to get your insight on the game as a coach that was coaching at the college level for so long and at a place like Rollins and you were at that level and then you went to Newberry, then you essentially came out of the game completely for four or five, six years with, you know, no involvement. And it's like, you kind of come back into it now at the level of the Scorpions. And then obviously with, with your son Brooks, you know, playing at uh, catching at JU, you know, you, you got a firsthand look at the game. I mean, what, what's your take on how the game's changed? What's your thoughts on all this with, with these kids? You know, it's interesting. I think that, you know, where, the, where I think the game's changed, I think the teaching of the game is has gone in, in a lot of ways in a bad direction. I think a lot of it has gone towards, you know, making a player look good with a showcase stuff and not as much teaching the kid to be a, a gritty, you know, a gritty baseball player. And I think when you find nowadays the young kid that is gritty, that's willing to learn the game and you, you find coaches that are willing to teach the game. I really believe you, you, you find that the kids that are starting to make it to the next level and really have success. You know, it, it's, it's really become an amazing thing to, to like, just all you got to do is look on social media. And I remember when my kids started playing at a young age, you told me, don't put anything on social media. The colleges hate it. The pro guys hate it. It looks stupid, blah, blah, blah. But if you look at it now, it's literally become a three ring circus. You know, I went three for five today with two doubles and you put a video up of it and you tag every single coach on the Western seaboard or the Eastern seaboard. And it's just very different now. You know, the players, I think, you know, you look at the guys that brought you up and, and coached you, you know, and, and you look at Troy and you and Mike Rodriguez and those guys. And and you look at, you know, a kid like Ryan Hanning who came to Rollins was well coached in the Northeast and was unselfish and played different positions. I just, I don't see a lot of that anymore. I don't see a lot of guys that really invest in the kids as far as teaching them how to play. It's about winning the trophy, hitting the ball the farthest, throwing the ball off the backstop. I, I think that, you know, where I see a difference is the teaching of the game. And I think that's affected a lot of the younger players. That's my personal opinion. I'm not saying coaches are bad. I'm, I just think that it's gone in a very different direction than when, I, you know, if you look at our practices, even at Rollins with a bunch of average guys going to a college world series, we're doing fundamental series every day. And Davey Johnson's out there backing it and making sure we do it every day. And I just don't think there's that investment in the player from that side of it anymore. And I think it shows with the kids, you know, you got a lot of kids with a lot of talent, but you have a lot of kids that can't play baseball. <clears throat> if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. It totally makes sense. And I think, you know, I, and that even ties into the whole data conversation. Because I think a lot of that is, uh, I think data is really to blame for a lot of that. And I think that's that's kind of become a problem because I think what, what you're seeing, uh, and again, as we've talked about several times, I think you're seeing data come into the game. Uh, and it's coming into the game pretty quickly. And then everybody right now, you have this whole flock of people that are trying to uh, teach off of it and teach the game. Um, and everybody's trying to learn how to teach off. And they're, they're making a lot of mistakes on teaching off the data. You know, it's getting a lot of bad hype. And, you know, it's like you see all these new drills now. I mean, I love the fact that there's technology coming into place, but, and I, I'm not opposed to a funky drill. But if you're going to show me a funky drill with a guy swinging a, a sledgehammer and saying, and standing and barking like a dog and hitting, you better show me the data on how that works or how that improves somebody. You know, and I, I think the, the luxury of data is being able to utilize it in a productive manner. And, and obviously, I know you guys have, uh, you have uh, Murchie, uh Hit House in, in Orlando, and I know you guys have data integrated, and you guys are doing a good job as an organization. And, and I call it, you guys are putting a focus on it, um, which you know, the, it, which is going to be key because now we're, we are getting to the point where college coaches want this information on players. I mean, it is it is a valued asset, and it's it's a resource for them to to, to utilize it. You know, what, what are your thoughts on on the data kind of integrating the game at your level now? I mean, what are you seeing change there? Well, you know, I may be an old guy, but I, I love the data. I mean, that's the one thing I learned in the oil field. You know, you, you got to know, you got to have the information before you spend a million bucks. I mean, it's just the way it is, you know, and, and uh, here's the thing. I, I, I'm an old school guy and I, I learned out of a lot of old school people, you know, and you know, you and I both know Davey Johnson really well. And Davey was an old school guy and 
but Davey was one of the first guys that used mathematics to, to build lineups, you know, and it's, it's not like it hasn't been around. I just think that, you know, when, when, when a lot of these guys, the older guys started losing their jobs and, and they brought in a lot of these younger guys to do evaluations, especially at the pro level, there was a red flag that went up and everybody just obviously went against it. But I can tell you with us, it's invaluable. We, we train our coaches to learn how to use it our way. We don't let people go rogue with it. We don't go on social media and say, this guy's exit velocity and launch angles or this, this and that without just, without having some educated evaluation behind it. And I think that starts with the organization. I think if you have an organization that just wants to throw numbers out there, you're not going to gain the respect of people by that because the numbers can be skewed. There's all different kinds of capture machines. You know that as well as I do. So it really becomes irrelevant. How does that information play? You know, you got a guy with 78 mile an hour, you know, exit velocity, and but he's one of the best shortstops in the league. Well, you, you can balance some of those things because defensively that kid's going to give you what his exit velocity doesn't, but he puts the ball, on, you know, the barrel on the ball 95% of the time. And he always gets on base and steals a lot of bases. You know, you got to learn how to use it and teach it rather than just look at a number and say, this kid's no good or this kid's better than this kid. You got to look at the playability of it. You know, we, we had a kid a couple of years ago who's now with the Atlanta Braves. And I remember watching him throw and he threw 97 miles an hour and the balls would be off the backstop, he, you know, hit kids, you know, and then he would just try to pitch and he'd just dominate. And I remember talking to the Braves and I'm like, look, man, if you can get this kid and you can convince this kid to pitch at 93, 94, 95, and not try to hump it up to 97, 98, he's going to be something for you. Well, this kid's like one step away from the big leagues now, three years later. I mean, you know, you told me a story about a pitcher and this is what I like data for. It's development. There was a pitcher that was traded to the Dodgers, I guess a year ago. And he had like a five ERA or seven ERA with, the, with his current team. Those are the Dodgers. They, they show him data that he threw too many fastballs and not enough sliders. He threw the ball down in the, up in the zone or not down in the zone. At the end of the season, we're like a one point something ERA with, with the Dodgers. That's what data is for. How can I take this information and give it to this player and help this player get better? Not how I can take this information and mass produce 70 different players because everybody's different. And how do I use it to help these kids get out? Because the, the biggest question I get asked is, you know, are the Scorpions a great organization? And honestly, I, I, I'm not a beat my chest type of guy. I don't care who the best organization is. We're the best organization for the kids that think we're the best. That's the bottom line. Our customer is the kid. So if we're out there just trying to win games and we're not trying to help kids get better, what, what good are we really as an organization? You know, a lot of the pro guys say, well, we should bring Legion back and Legion ball is much better. Legion ball is never coming back. So how can we make amateur baseball better as a whole? And the only way to do that is to, is to evolve with what's happening. And what's happening is data is becoming a big part of it. So if you don't have a staff that believes in it and wants to use it to help teach kids, then they're going to be far behind and they're probably not going to succeed at the next level. Because at the next level, they're all using it, whether you like it or not. And, and, you know, and I don't mean to ramble on. I know lastly, I'd like to say it's a great evaluation tool for younger coaches. If I can tell my younger coaches with the Scorpions that the average exit velocity in the SEC is 94 miles an hour, then when we get a kid that comes to them and says, hey, I want to play at Florida, and we know his average exit velocity is 82, instead of steering that kid into an automatic transfer situation or even a non-recruiting situation, we can try to put that kid in the right fit. So we use it for two ways. We use it for, to help us place kids and help them show reality. And we also use it for development. So for us, it's, it's a huge tool. And I'm glad we're, we're doing what we're doing this year with the recruiting profiles. And it's really, we want to evolve with the way the games evolve. Yeah, you know, well, it's, it's funny. I mean, that's such a big topic and that's such a, the core piece of this. And we had uh, Sheffield and, um, <clears throat> and uh, Brian Hannigan on the call earlier today. And, and it's, it's like, when you think about it, which is one of my favorite parts about data. And I get, again, I go back to the core of what we got to do uh, in the positions that we're in is educate people on what data is, is every, the, the single biggest quality that every big leaguer has is they know who they are as a player, period. And I think what you're seeing with data now is coaches and people and players are training the data, training off the data to get better as players or to hit balls harder or to hit balls more in the air instead of saying, this is my data. This is the kind of player I am. So this is the kind of game I'm going to play. So if you are, you know, looking back on my career saying, if I would have, if I would have talked to, uh, look, had data right now, uh, and during my playing career, I would have looked at my data and saying, Kevin, I really am not, uh, I don't hit a ball hard enough to hit home runs. 
you know, I, I, I don't have that kind of power to be able to do that. So I, I got to get that out of my head because I know for me, I was affected by that philosophy. I always tried to create it and try to become, you know, Han Hannigan and Chef were talking about hitting in the three hole or hitting in the eight hole. It's like, you know, I was a eight hole hitter and it would have helped me train and hit like an eight hole hitter instead of trying to be a three hole hitter. And that's that's a big problem. I mean, that's ultimately that's data and that's the way it could be used there. And, and, and I think a lot of people forget that. They're, they're trying to teach that kid that hits the ball 76 miles an hour to hit it straight up. And then of course, that, that's a dumb idea, you know, in everybody's mind. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the biggest thing is like, again, it goes back to what value are we giving to our kids, right? I mean, if we have that eight hole hitter. So if we're gonna teach that eight hole hitter to hit like Brendan Rogers, that's really not a productive way to help a kid develop, you know? And, and to be honest with you, the best part about it is it also, is going to help our coaches learn not to coach. You know what I mean? Like there's certain things, certain, you don't go and screw a Brendan Rodgers swing. You know, with yeah. Brendan Rodgers, you, you know, when he's 17, 16, 15 years old, you work with approach and different pitches and different ways to hit. You know, you and I had the opportunity to coach a team that was loaded this summer. I, I you know, there are other people's players, but, you know, I didn't walk out to the mound and tell Tommy Mace how to throw a pitch. You know, you go up to the mound and talk to Tommy Mace about different things and Updike talked about pressure points that he saw in the data and things like that. Like, that's the things to me where if we're helping these kids at 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, we're giving them the best chance to succeed. And, and I, you know, for the naysayers out there, I, got, I you know, I've never seen anybody make, make a decision without information. And that's what data is. It's 100% flat information. And, you know, you can either use it or not, but I'd rather have as much ammo in my gun as I have, I mean, as I can. And, you know, you know, playing for me, I was anal about everything. I had spray charts and charts and things. And I was never a great baseball coach. I don't, I'm, I never want to be a hitting coach. I didn't want to be a pitching coach. I don't want to be any kind of, I just wanted to manage a baseball team. That's what I like doing, building teams. But for me, all that information was important. If I, can, if I know that, you know, University of Tampa hits backside gap for two strikes 90% of the time, well, I'm going to put somebody in the, in the backside gap 90% of the time. That's just the way it is. I mean, it's always been out there, but you guys have been able to capture it in many different ways and, and provide a great visual way, an easy way for people to abstract it now, rather than me going into a spreadsheet and making my own graphs and doing different things. What you guys have done with it is simplified it for, for everybody who's not an engineer and that that to me is you have that information there you have the ability to use it why wouldn't you use it yeah i i, I we, we agree we we definitely agree about that over over here but uh right i appreciate it man you're the man um uh, a lot of good information uh, i i always love talking to you you're my i wish we could do it all the time so uh, well, i appreciate you guys and you know I, I always wish the best for you guys and i'm i'm glad you were able to pull this thing off even though uh you know we got the COVID or whatever it is and we're, we're just glad we're not in DC. Yeah, I know. No kidding, huh? I know. So, well, we know right, we're, we're in a country right now where it's, we just hate each other. So that's just, you know, whether you're <laughs> know. left or right, we just hate each other no matter what. So it's stuck. But yeah. that's just the way it is. We, we, could have, we could have a whole Zoom call on that. Yeah, I know. Well, thank you guys so much. And if you ever need anything from me, you know where I am. And look forward to having you guys on the field for trials this weekend. You give, guys are going to give these kids something they can take away that's really cool. Really cool. cool. Awesome, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.